today we are going to talk about our last chapter. So, so we are going to uh, finish this chapter today. In next class, we on Wednesday we will talk about our exam number three practice. For the practice, I will post uh, the practice tonight on Great on Great View, and Wednesday I will um, discuss those questions. So please make sure you'll be here on Wednesday so we can uh, work on those uh, practice. So that's the uh, that's the whole week. So next Monday we will have the exam in class. So 75 minutes. It will cover chapter 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Okay. So last chapter is about still about optimization, but it's about nonlinear optimization. So chapter 12, chapter 13 talks about linear optimization. So linear and uh, linear integer optimization. This one, so what is non-linear optimization? So the concept is simple. So you, if you remember, when we talk about optimization model, we have an objective function, we have a bunch of constraints. So if your objective function or one of your constraints is in a non-linear form, so we call it non-linear non-linear optimization model. So there are, in real life, there are a bunch of applications for uh, nonlinear optimization. So uh, affiliated location problem and some investment and uh, risk uh, assessment problem and so forth. There are a bunch of uh, uh, applications. But in today's lecture, we are going to revisit a problem that we worked on in the, I think in the chapter 12. So if you remember this part, uh, Corporation, so that company produces two types of uh, golf bags. So one is the standard, the other is uh, I think it's a deluxe. Yes. So in the in the previous chapter, we 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 formulated a linear optimization model for this one. We assume that um, all the all the products will be sold. But of course, we have some constraints on different processes. I think we have like four processes, and we have limited resources for each of the uh, resources or the processes. So then we formulate the, pro uh, the problem in mathematical model, and we put it in, in, in the Excel. We use a li simple linear uh, solver to solve it, but things have been changed. So we add more things uh, to this model. So in reality, Something we know is that your demand depends on the price. So for example, if I set a really high price for my product, the demand will be really low. But if I set a really uh, relatively low price, my demand will be high. So let's consider this uh, factor in this model. Let, let's revisit this model by considering the impact of your price to the demand. Okay. Okay. So, so in formulating the linear regression mo uh, programming model, so we assume that the company could sell all the standard and deluxe bags that can, uh, it can produce. Depending on the price of the bags, this assumption may not hold. So in reality, it has to, the demand has to depend on the price you charge. So then there's a relationship between the price and demand. So as the price increases, the quantity demand decreases. So that's something we, what we that's something we expect. So let's assume that let's use the P as to denote the price for the standard bag. So P represents the price, the small s represents the standard bag. So that's the price of standard bag. And then let's use P D to denote the price of deluxe bag. So we have two more things in this model. Okay? Then let's formulate the relationship between the demand and the price. So for standard bag, here's the relationship. So we made up the relationship but it's, it's a linear form there are many uh, other forms we just use uh, uh, the additive linear form so 
the demand for standard value is equal to a constant minus 15 times the price. So if you increase the price, the demand will decrease. Same thing for the demand for the large box, we have a constant minus 5 times the price. Price goes up, demand goes down, and that's worse. Okay? So that's the relationship between the demand and the price. And still we have the cost. The cost to produce a standard value is 70 dollars and the cost for producing the deluxe bag is 150. So we have those two numbers. And then when we calculate the profit, we have to calculate, you know the form formula is the price minus the cost times the quantity you sell. So that that's the profit function. But before that, let's talk about the the whole Profit. How we how how can we incorporate this function into this function? So that's uh, I think that's uh, the the, uh, the whole contribution. But how do we incorporate that function to here? So let me write down. Let me write down the formula. So the as the demand is equal to two two five. optimization, 
the objective function can be nonlinear or the constraint can, can be nonlinear. But in this case, we have a, a nonlinear objective function. So that's a function we want to optimize or we want to maximize. Maximize the total profit. So that's the object, our objective function. Okay. And how do how do we incorporate those two functions? We have to manipulate those two functions a little bit and again the relationship between the P and the demand, the P and the, the, the other demand, and plug the uh, the relationship relationship into those functions. So that's how we get this. So we will, we, will, we will solve this uh, optimization model later, but after we solve that, um, we need to know how we can find the uh, optimal solution. So we, we still apply the constraints that we had in the previous lectures or the uh, previous chapters. So here is the feasible reason for constraint problem after we adding the uh, the resources, uh, resource availability for each of the processes. But if we just solve, if we just solve this question without any constraints, this is what we have. This is what we have. And obviously, this one, this optimal solution is outside of the feasible region. So after adding the constraints, we will see how we can find the optimal solution in our feasible region. So let's use the uh, Excel solver to find that uh, solution. So we are not going to do that uh, in this class because we just uh, we, we can only we just implement the objective function there. We don't have to add constraints, so that's an uh, easy thing to do. So that's the solution for unconstrained uh, problem. So. So 60, uh, 600 for the standard bag, 375 for the deluxe bag, and we have the, uh, the, the total profit. Okay. And then let's talk about the constraint problem. Still we have one, two, three, four. <coughs> we have four processes, and we have constraints for those four processes. So after adding the constraints, we still, we still have the same objective function, but here are our constraints. Cutting and dying, the, the problem, the, the, the availability is 630. Then we have the number there, so it's from the Excel uh, file. So, sealing, finishing, uh, inspection, and packaging, we have all the constraints, and do not forget to add this one. So, when we, so in your assignments, uh, <coughs> I need you to formulate a mathematical model. Probably that's the part A. For most of the questions, that's part A. For part B, you need to implement this model into Excel and then solve it. So when, when you write down your mathematical model, those are the things that I need. You need to have your objective function. So just like profit function. Then you need to tell me, are you maximizing the function or are you minimizing the function? So you need to mention max or min. So that's for that the, the objective function. Then you need to lay out all the constraints. So most of the constraints are resource constraints. So it cannot be greater than a certain value, but sometimes they have some constraints on uh, the relationship between variables. So one production, so if you produce two types of products, one quantity cannot be over like twice of the other one, so some, some constraint like that. So you will add those constraints in there. And lastly, you need to add the non-negativity constraint. So in the mathematical model, you need to do that, but in the Excel solver, there is the, there is the option you can check. So you don't have to implement this one, you, you don't have to write down this constraint in the Excel solver, but you, you just check that option. But in the mathematical model, you have to write this like this, non-negativity constraint. But if you work on the integer programming, you need to write down as and D have to be 
integer or if you are working on binary variables, you have to specify s and d for some variables x1 or x2 have to be binary. So those are the things you have to, uh, to write down. But before you write down all of them, you need to identify your detailed variables. So in this case, the production quantity or the demand, so in this case, demand equals the production quantity. So whatever demand you have, you produce the same amount. So you need to identify the detailed variable. So that's a very first step, but you don't have to show that to me, but you need to, from your objective function, I know your detailed variable. But vir virtually you have to think about what detailed variables I need to have. So that's my metric model. So that's a whole optimization model. Then let's solve this model in Excel. So please log on to your menu and download the Excel file and their chapter 14. You need to 
lay out your decision variable. So here there are two variables, or two decisions you have to make. How many standard bags you need to produce? How many deluxe bags you need to produce? Okay. So you can name it bags uh, produced or bag, bag to produce, whatever you want to name it. Then here you, you have to put some names there, but here are the two cells where you put your real value, decision value. Okay. So you are when you when you define the your constraints or objective functions in the solver, you are gonna select those two cells. Those two cells where you put the values instead of those two texts. Okay? So let's not select those two. You're gonna select those two. Okay? So that's why normally please highlight those two cells. Okay? Because later on you may forget, okay, where are my decision variables then? If you highlight those two cells, you know, okay, those are my decision variables. Okay. Then you need to define your objective function. So here, your objective is to maximize your profit. So your objective function will give the value for your profit. So you can just say profit or total profit. Okay. Then this is the cell where you put the formula for calculating the profit function. So you also highlight this cell. Then there should be a bunch of constraints. There should be a bunch of constraints. So if we go back to the slides, we have constraints for the four oper operations or four processes. So four processes, um, we need to make sure that the hours that are consumed, so each of the operation is not above availability. So that, that means we, so when we lay out the constraints, we have a uh, uh, left hand side, yes, left hand side and right hand side, then you use uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to those things. That means in Excel file, you need to have two columns as well. So this column, the first column represents the left hand side formula or variable. So here, this cell, you put in how to calculate the hours to be used for the first operation. And the same thing for the second one, third one, the fourth one. So that's the first column. And the next column is about your resource availability. So for the first process or for the first operation, how many hours are available? Say 30, which is equal to there. And the second process or second operation, third operation, and the fourth operation. Then you have your constraints. So those are the constraints you need to put in the in the Excel this file. So you may ask, uh, how should I put the non-negativity constraints? In the Excel model, you don't have to put it, you don't have to put anything because in the solver interface, you have the option to check that, so you don't have to implement that in here. So it, it doesn't hurt if you put it in there, that, that's also fine. It doesn't hurt. So one additional thing in this question is that we have price function. We have price function. Then, for this question, you have to define your price function. You need to give a formula for this. So that's how we do the, the modeling. Okay. So it's not just for this problem, it's also for your assignment questions, also for uh, the last exam questions. So you need to follow the format. Parameters at the first section, the second section, the whole section is what model. For the model section, you have to lay out, you need to tell me your decision variables. Then the second one, you need to define how to, you need to tell Excel. How to calculate your profit. Then the third one, the third major function is your constraints. So you need to tell Excel how to calculate the hours to be used for the first process, second process, third process, and so forth. Otherwise, Excel doesn't know. If you leave it blank or if you just type in the number, it, Excel doesn't know, or the cell power doesn't know how to calculate the constraints. 
then you will have uh, uh, you cannot solve the optimization model. So those are the two major sections that you must have when you define your optimization model to say to them. So any questions on formulating the uh, optimization model in the exam? Here I have two price functions. Uh, but if you want to directly define your profit function, that's all the point. So you don't have to do this additional uh, additional step. So you can directly uh, incorporate this function in here. That, that's all the point. down your objective function. The objective function has to be in terms of your decay term. So that's the profit function. In the last the last section I need to work on is the constraints. I need to tell Excel how to calculate the number of hours due to each operation. So that's going to be so the first process. Let me use some program. How this should be the number of production times.
Okay, it's just constant passive. This one times this one plus this one times this.
after we complete the whole model in the installer, so we are going to select this GRT nonlinear. So that's called generalized reduced gradient gradient method. So that algorithm is to solve nonlinear model. So let's select that one. But before that, let's click on the option. Then let's click on the GRT nonlinear tab. So there are a few things you can define. So sometimes we use this multi-start. So sometimes we, uh, because the nonlinear optimization model has a feasible region, the feasible region of the nonlinear model is really complicated. It's not a, like a, the simple linear model. Okay? So sometimes when we search the optimal solution, we may reach to a local optimal. So something we have to we will discuss in the later slide. But in order to overcome this uh, difficulty, let's we can select a multi multi start option. And under this multi start option, we have a few things to define. One is called population size. So when the algorithm starts to search the optimal solution, it can start from different locations. Let's assume that this is the whole region is uh, the whole feasible region. So instead of having one starting point in search, 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 how about let's start from 100 different locations? So that's a population size. So that's a population size. So if you define 100, you will start from 100 different locations. Okay, they will start to search the optimal solution. Then they will compare, okay, what's your uh, uh, optimal so solution? What, what's your uh, optimal solution? Then they compare the optimal solution uh, from each starting point. Then they will come down to the uh, one uh, so-called global optimization uh, solution. So that's the population size. The other one is a random seed. So this random seed is used to determine where I should start. So the location-wise, the locations of the starting search are based on the random seed. Okay. So you can leave it there, or you can randomly uh, give a, uh, a number there. So it doesn't matter. Then the, there's one option called require bound on variable. So here. We only have one constraint on the variable, so they have to be uh, non-negative. Non so greater than, greater, greater than or equal to zero. But in order to um, speed up your search, so you can give some constraints on the value of the, your decision variable. So based on your experience, the quantity of standard bag cannot uh, has to be between like 10 and 100. Then the solver will know, okay, I will give, give up searching any solutions that has the number of uh, standard bags that is greater than 100. So that will save us a lot of time and it will uh, discard, discard a lot of uh, uh, potential solutions that we have to uh, search. So if you, you can check this option. So if you check that option in the solver, you will need to give additional constraints to the decision variable. So if you do not give constraints on the decision variables, even if you check that option, it's, it will just ignore that. But if you want to uh, help your solver, can give some constraints based on your, your knowledge. But if you do not have the knowledge, if you have no idea how the decision variables should look like, just just, just give it. Okay. So that's the one. Let me use multi star. Let me check this one. Okay. Multi star problem.
same numbers or different numbers?
This is the last one. That's 13. Alright, so we go into this chapter. How the, uh, the algorithm search works. So that's the unconstrained problem, but here's our feasible region. So if you remember when we were talking about the linear model, linear programming, so we have a line, so we move the line to the extreme point, so it's not like that anymore. So we have the unconstrained optimal solution then we have the we have the contour in contour lines so each line represents the solutions that give the same or kind of uh, function value so then we starting from this point we search 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 then when we reach this point that's our optimal solution so that's how the, the search algorithm works That's how we did uh, the procedure, right? That's how, how we did it. And we, we put some numbers. Okay, so when you look at the report, uh, let me show you one. station uh, power, we can generate the answer report, and we can also generate the sensitivity report here. So the sensitivity report, so here we have two, two sections, the variable cells, and with that called the constraint, so we have variable cells and we have so we have two things here, variable cells. We have to reduce gradient. So if you remember, the algorithm is called generalized reduce gradient method. And constraint, we have a log longitude multiplier. So if we go back. So the reduced gradient is a value associated with a variable in the nonlinear model. So that is similar to the reduced cost in the linear model. So the shadow, which is a shadow price of y, y is simple lower or upper bound to the descent variable. So that's the definition of reduced uh, gradient. The other thing we need to know is the log longitude multiplier. So that's a shadow price for constraint in a nonlinear form. That is the rate of change of the objective function value to respect the right hand side of the constraint. If we go back, so you know. We have, when we have a constraint, we have the, the hours used to be less than or equal to the right hand, right hand side is the uh, hours uh, available. So if we change the right hand side, so that's the log long, long the multiplier. That's 
the local optimality and global optimality. Those are the two things uh, I just mentioned. So local uh, uh, maximum and local minimum, those are the local optimality conditions. So when we do the optimization, when we search for the solution, we want to have the global optimal solution. But our algorithms uh, do not give us the optimality, the global optimality condition all the time. So this is just uh, the algorithm. So when we do the search, sometimes when we reach for point with the, the, algorithm, the algorithm thinks, okay, that's the minimum value or it's the maximum value. But actually, it's not. So it stops there. So then that means we reach to a local optimality condition, either maximum or minimum. So when, when the OR people operations management or op uh, optimization people work on the algorithm, they try to overcome this local optimality condition. So global optimum, so that's, that's a theoretical optimal solution to this uh, to the problem. So if we look at the, um, the objective function, there are two forms. One is the convex form, the other is a uh, concave form. So concave form is in, in this form, formulation. So for example, the objective function, the f of x is equal to negative five x squared minus five x. So that's concave function, it's, it's like this shape. So the opening is facing down, so that's function. Normally when we do <coughs> the maximization problem, for example, we try to maximize the profit, then this we normally deal with the concave function. So because in here we have a maximum objective function. So normally when we maximize our objective function, we deal with this kind of uh, problem. try to mi uh, minimize our cost. When we do the location problem, so if we you have three facilities to locate, for example, three distribution centers, and you have a lot of uh, grocery stores, you need to lay out three distribution centers. Then normally you want to minimize the traveling cost. So the trucks travel from distribution centers to serve different uh, stores, you want to minimize the total traveling cost. Then you're gonna formulate a minimization problem. Then you are dealing with a complex function. So those are the two types of functions. So overcome the local uh, optimal. Then, so that's normally this is what we deal with for the search region. So it's not flat, it's not that simple. So what, Sometimes we have high peaks, we have low points, and so on and so forth. If you deal with the uh, maximization problem, if you start here, so you search, you search, probably you, your algorithm will stop there. So that's a peak point. So around this point, no other points are greater than this value. So some not good algorithm will stop right there. So it will report hey, this is the optimal solution. But in reality, this is not. Because here is the optimality condition. So some uh, algorithm have to search, search, search. It really depends on where you start. So that's why we, when we were working on the, the, the example that we had uh, for the, uh, producing the two types of bags, we use, uh, uh, if we have multi-start, Instead of having one starting point, let's say if 
we start from here, so we just search, search, search here or search from there. So that's a local op optimal condition. Then it will st stop there. But what if we have 100 different points to start with? Here, here, there, 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 there. maybe here. Then it starts from here, it reaches out to here. Then all the 100 points will compare their optimal solution. What are the uh, best solutions they have? Then the, after the comparison, we know, okay, this is the optimal solution. So that's how we overcome the, the local optimized condition. Because the nonlinear pro, uh, problem is uh, a re for simple region is really complicated. Using a solver and uh, starting point, so we have we just need to select the starting point. So that's what we had. Some questions require you to define the bounds for the variable. So you have in the solver, you have to click the options, go to the GRG nonlinear tab, you check the required variable bounds, then you need to give some boundaries for the different variables. Otherwise, the solver will just ignore, ignore uh, the sensor left. Nonlinear optimization. So the, the difference is that the format of op, uh, objective function or constraints are, are different. They are in nonlinear form, and we use a different solver to solve the, uh, the the problem. So tonight I will post two things. One is the practice. The other one is the, the assignment. The assignment will be due uh, uh, next Monday. So after the our exam. And chapter 14 quiz is available. Uh, I realized we don't we didn't cover all of all the things that we need to work on the quiz for. So I need you to uh, read the PowerPoint slides. And the chapter 14 uh, quiz will be considered as your actual credit. So the actual credit will be two points. So if you have 100 percent on the quiz 14, you will have two points on actual credit. So, uh, and on Wednesday we will talk about the practice. So let's make sure we be here on time and we will cover the practice. So in the final exam we will have three questions. So for all the questions you have to formulate your mathematical model as we did in the PowerPoint slides. And the other one is to formulate or put your mathematical model in the spreadsheet and solve it. So those are the types of questions we will have. Uh, I think that's all we have today, so we will meet again on our website. Okay, really yeah. Let me check that.